Hello, my name is Marilyn Griffiths. I'm Catherine Brown. I'm Connie Telford, I'm the uh, technician here on the Architectural Arts course. My name is Rachel Phillips. My name is Lisa Burkle, um, I'm Programme Director for the Architectural Arts in Glass. Do you think it's affected the students then, I mean, this made in the department? Definitely influenced mm. their work, you can see it in some of their projects. But even as well, I've seen their interest in watching us deal with it. I've been involved in this project right from the start, from when uh, we were taken up on top of the roof in our hard hats and uh, we did lots of gargoyle poses in the windows. And I was involved with going up to the tower and taking measurements. My role in the project, well, it's, it came later because the design was more or less finished and decided on by the time I was, became involved in it. Um, I was project managing sort of the creative side. We felt like we needed someone to oversee it all and we were all really happy for her to project manage it. She's had experience in large scale commissions before and so she just seemed the, the right person for the job. The Beacon project was to design and make uh, a new glass artwork for the tower room in Alex Design Exchange which is um, the building that uh, stained glass and glass education has been in for over 80 years and now it's, the building's been renovated and as sort of a celebration and a part of that renovation was to make a new substantial artwork for the building. First of all, when we um, sat down and thought about what we were going to design, we were up on the hill because we were out to the department for a year and when you looked down you could see the building and you could see the tower where the windows were going to be and it struck us, it was like a crown. So in terms of the concept of the design, it, it, it was a lot of thoughts about, you know, the position of the tower and it can be seen from all around Swansea so we did want it to be a statement about the university as a whole but also what is now the School of uh, 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 Design and Applied Arts. But also we were really keen on saying something about how we wanted the, the glass course to move in the future so it was really important that uh, there was contemporary techniques in it but also taken from our um, training, you know, in traditional stained glass, taking some of those elements. Celebration of the history of the education here and, and, and kind of what we value. And what we value is, is making, is, is the material of glass, but also um, ongoing innovation and ongoing practice. So the struggles were about communicating enough at the right time um, and, and keeping things, I suppose, lightly enough in the design stage so that you allowed every person to have a, a voice. We brought um, ideas, we had weekly meetings where we'd bring ideas. What I found really wonderful was to see somebody challenging your way of thinking, challenging your thoughts and make you think, okay, well maybe I should look at it in another way and it sort of opens your mind a bit more. You know, you've all got your own little inputs and it, sometimes it, it can get quite attention in the room you know but you work through it and we did have discussions you know sometimes heated discussions and passionate discussions but there was always respect there you know for for each other's um experiences and so always at the end of those discussions you know it felt worthwhile those discussions i think were so valuable because they not only solve a problem but they also feed you with new ideas and different ways of looking at things. So I, I will always treasure those. The st one of the struggles was to keep everything going and, and making sure bit, other bits were being done. So that's, that's a strength and a weakness. It depends how well it goes. And, and in this, everyone's kind of carried their part of the, the project well, I think, yeah. The exciting things about the project was, was it that it was to be a celebration of skills of stained glass that are, are very old and established, but also uh, new technology. So there was a whole range of techniques and then also bonding technologies um, onto large sheets of, uh, of backing glass so they could be hung like tapestries. Also we wanted to have a nod at the students that had gone before sort of the bloodline. We wanted to kind of highlight the, the continuum and, and also change of the course and, the, uh, and we asked for people to send in symbols to represent themselves in, in in the design and wanted to incorporate those. Because I think every, every person who's passed through this place has, has added to the, the life of the course and the building and, and a part of its history. 
and, and part of its future. So, so we wanted to incorporate that. That was a really crucial thing. When I joined, the design was pretty much um, set. Or, you know, they had quite strong ideas about having this bloodline section through, um, which symbolised the history of, of Swansea Glass um, and the future of Swansea Glass. Um, and the idea was then that it, within this bloodline, this red line that runs through the whole of the 12 um, panels, that that would be water jet cut with these piercings. And originally the piercings were going to be um, little symbols and things. Um, and then it was a, a quite a static grid, which um, Rachel wasn't particularly happy with. It wasn't all set when it came to the making. There's, you know, it was an interpretation of a design on paper. Um, one of my inputs then was to, to sort of start to rejig that gridding system and make it a bit more organic. The ideas are great, you know when it starts and you oh yes, enthusiasm, that's great, yeah we'll do this, we'll do that. And then the problems start, so we had to try and find out a way how we were going to put this window up in the tower space. There were lots of discussions that the team had about um, fitting and sort of the weight of the glass. So all these ideas came around, you know, well let's just put it inside the double glazed unit. But there was problems with that, with guarantees and, and trouble with the mechanisms for the windows opening. So we came up then with the idea of, well we'll fix in front of the windows. So we came up with all these proposals and every one of them was kind of shot down. Well not shot down, but there was a reason why we couldn't do it, you know. And then we had this metal structure that suddenly appeared to keep the tower in place, um, which really threw the kind of the design ideas. So then we just came up with the idea, well, let's just have it hanging in front, like a, a free thing floating. Oh, hanging glass, hold on, you know. How are we gonna do that? Is that gonna be safe? And then when you start to measure the glass and you realize how big and how thick, this is like 10 mil glass. Then of course, once that was decided, it threw the girls' sort of original ideas out for their designs. Then there was issues with, you know, these kind of space spaces, the, the clear spaces between the coloured sections and um, the quickest and the easiest and most efficient way of, of using that within the design, but still making the design look, you know, cohesive. So, um, yeah, there was lots of discussions that were going on throughout the project, not just in the kind of the paper stage of design, if you like. So there's things happened along the way, sort of little hiccups, things that have been imposed on us, um, building regulations and things like that, which made us have to steer, not just the design, but then the actual fabrication as well. So we go, right, well, we can't do that now. What can we do? But Working in the team as we did felt a very safe atmosphere. It felt safe doing it with the others because you could blame them. No. <laughs> the experience that stayed with me was watching Colin cut those huge pieces of white glass that were hundreds of pounds worth of, of glass, you know, sometimes this thick, sometimes that thin, you know, and just knowing how difficult that is to do and the pressure we didn't have any extra glass. That, that's the kind of pressure that, you know, that you think, well, if I mark this cut up, how am I going to explain to someone we need a couple of more sheets of, of antique glass? When somebody asks you to uh, take something on board, you're going, well, you're representing the team. It's like being in the Olympics. I'm representing the team today, you know? So you, you're really aware that you want to do a good job? I think it was, it was an amazing experience to, um, to be part of that and to appreciate each other's skills and, and knowledge that perhaps we didn't realise that quite how extensive that knowledge was as well. The next step to this will be each of us to make, make a piece of work in response to, to this project that we've worked on and then look at working in collaboration with one other and then maybe as teams and, and produce a body of work from that and maybe into more research on collaborative practice. It's given me another look on my own work as well, on the way I work, so we've, we've been talking now, you know, about we, we must carry on working together, let's have an exhibition together, I mean, so, that's, so it has revitalised me, I'd say, yeah, definitely. But also, yeah, to be, uh, I want it to be, you know, a, a joyful, celebratory work um, that people can see from all around Swansea and, and you know, know that the college is there. It's also for us about keeping those traditional skills um, 
that are slowly fading, you know, in, in other um, universities and colleges and things, um, as well as trying to be innovative and keep, you know, the, the sort of contemporary work going at the same time. So it's those two pathways that we're, we feel are our aims. I'm really excited to see it up, the whole thing. I mean, you can see some of it is, is partly um, fixed now, but it's covered with scaffolding, so you can't really see the full extent. I think the, the, the true time that we'll really enjoy it is on a, when it's all finished and it's on an amazing sunny day and we'll see that how the light comes through and how it throws the colour onto the walls and, you know, makes that amazing atmosphere that we, we're all hoping it will. You know, to where the sun comes up, how it moves around the building and it will throw light all through the building. And then at night when it's lit, you know, how you see it around the city will be great to actually experience after all the planning of what it's going to be like. <laughs>